Silva. Um, he's been with um, Chickmaster for seven years. Um, his current position um, is a sales engineer or technical sales um, for JCMI for combined companies. Um, he's worked in HVAC with some other companies in, in agriculture, industrial, as well as residential. And his background is mechanical um, engineering background. So a lot of good technical background as well as um, yeah, expertise directly in our in our hatcheries and and uh, how to ventilate. So the topic today is going to be really just about how important ventilation is in in our hatcheries, not necessarily specific to a machine, but for our hatcheries. So um, with that, I will go ahead and turn the time over to Rui. Um, if you would share your screen, and again at the end of this presentation, we will entertain questions. Um, so I will uh, check out and see you all back then. So Rui, go ahead. Glad to have you here. Thanks. Thank you. So can you see my screen? Can you see it, Keith? Yes. Yes, okay. that's good. So good afternoon all, or good day, depending where, where you are. Where you are. Um, so we're going to talk about ventilation in, the, in hatcheries in general. And uh, we'll, we'll touch different, different subjects and uh, a bit more some technical, but sometimes we need to touch some of the technical side and to understand why we need um, the ventilation and why sometimes we refer to some topics. So in some respect, everything is connected and we, we all go through it a little bit and please bear with me for the next hour. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk a bit about the embryo development, the psychometry, the air pressure and the, our final conclusions. And so, our hatchery goals, it's easy, like it's just turning the eggs into chicks, just like we do in nature with a, with a chicken hen, what we'll do to the, to the eggs in nature. That's what we are trying to do in our incubator. So that's, that's very easy, right? Sorry. And, um, and the importance of the, of the hatchery in the, in the overall process, I think gets more more weight if we, if we look like it was before and what we compare nowadays due to the genetics the, the evolution on the genetic side and um, the time that we take the um, the chick to the um, to the market so we shorten this period but the incubation time it remains the same so we 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 still have 21 days on the incubation and therefore the overall weight on the incubation side has more has more impact on what we do so what we do on our hatchery I think has a bigger impact what, what will happen um, after. We have, there are different goals that you can have in a hatchery, but you can summarize in different ways. In the end, what you want to do is you want to bring more birds from the same number of eggs. So it's like in every business, you want to do more with less. So you want to have more chicks with, with the same number of eggs, or you want to, to increase the, the seven days weight placement or reduce the seven days mortality, reduce hatch recalls, increase your hatch ability. So different KPIs that each has a, each company or each customer will work different. But in the end, that's what we want to do is to have the best quality chick at the lowest cost possible for the num number for that um, number of eggs. Um, and um, the influence on the on the envelope on the uh, embryo development has different uh, has different source of impact right it's uh, coming from different sides and so you can you can buy one very good incubation machine or one very good um, uh, automation machine or um, be very good on the dis disinfection or on the on the egg management side on the farm or or on the chick on the chick side but in the end it's it's a question of uh, matching everything and try to 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 go through different through different um, points on the on the development and that's why i think it's important that what we can do so some of these points they are related to human human behavior or uh, human tasks and those they are more difficult to control but the, the the ones that you can control will be the ones being on the more automation on the on the machine side so if we if we can control this we are reducing the the scope of our error that we can have from, from our overall process because the, the human error, it will always be there. And, and in the end, it's all about temperature and humidity. It's, it's easy. It's um, everything we do, an incubator, regardless of the brand, regardless of type of machine it is, single stage, multi-stage, uh, what any type of brand, 
with 40 or uh, 40 years old or um, from this late year, it's about temperature and humidity. That's what you want to control via the, the oxygen that you provide, the air movement. But in the end, it's all about temperature and, and humidity. And the hatching of the egg, it will depend how it will utilize the nutrients. And with the nutrients, we, we want to say that the oxygen is the only thing that you can provide to, to the egg. It's the only nutrient that you can provide to the egg for the, egg, for the embryo development oxygen is the only nutrient that you can provide. And so how you provide this oxygen, how you control the air movement around the egg, and how you control all the, the set points, the temperature and relative humidity, that's what will give you um, a good egg development. And the growth of the embryo is driven by oxygen. Again, oxygen is the only, the only nutrient that you can, you can provide to your, to, your, to your egg. And so if we start with, with the basics, like we say, we have five key parameters. It will be temperature, humidity, or relative humidity, if you may, oxygen, CO2 control, and turning. And we will see that from these five, four out of, four out of five, it will come from your ventilation system. Only the turning will be specified uh, or dedicated in your machine. Uh, we need to control this. We need to control the temperature because in the beginning, the embryo is endothermic and it starts to, to be exothermic towards the end of the, of the development. Um, so it means that in the beginning, you need to provide heat to the, to the embryo and you need to start removing as long as the, as long as the temperature, the heat produced by the, by the embryos will, will start to rise. So it means that the temperature starts to be a function of control. And so you need to control the, the heat that you provide and the heat that you apply to the, to the system and also the heat that you remove. So temperature is a function of control. The same with relative humidity or if humidity. And we will touch this and we will try to understand a little bit the difference between humidity and relative humidity. But for now, the external humidity affects the internal moisture. And we know that we have a target on the egg weight loss uh, that we need to, to achieve, and that will come from the from the, um, humidity, because the egg will produce, start to produce, uh, as long as you consume more oxygen, you'll to produce more, more, more heat, and it will release more CO2, and that will come through the, on the egg weight loss, and that needs to come on, uh, via the air. So also humidity is a function of control. And just, just for uh, the sake of an example, a P120 or a A24, um, so a, a James or a Chick Master machine, similar number of eggs, it will produce around 900 liters of moisture. And this moisture will come, or it will go out from, the, from your exhaust system. So this, this will be controlled by your ventilation. This is for an average egg of 65 grams and an egg weight loss between nine and 12%. So depending on, on your flock and your machine, so you, you will have different, but it will not be far away from, from this range. Uh, but just to give you an, an idea of how much moisture you need to lose in, around the, along the, the 18 days of the incubation on your setter. So that's a huge quantity that you need to control. And that's very important. The same with, with the oxygen, because the, the, the embryo will start to produce more oxygen. That's why in the single stage in the beginning, we have a, a, a close damper or a more, more close to in the beginning. And then we start to, to open to to introduce the CO2, the, sorry, the O2 in the machine via the, the circulation of the air. So also again, the, uh, the O2 is a function of control, and this will be of course linked to the more O2 you 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 consume or the egg will consume, it will release more CO2, and everything is linked, and one is linked to the other, and it's also a function of control, and and the turning. So like it happens on the on the nature turning is also a function of control and it will depend on the stage, uh, but this will be coming from the machine. So from these five key parameters, turning will be the only coming from, the, um, from your machine or specifically only controlled by your, your machine, if you may. And uh, the embryo will receive the, the oxygen by passive diffusion. What this means is that there is no external mechanism or there is no mechanical mechanism on the, um, on the egg that will will allow the the the, um, the exchanges of gas. So it means that you need to create a, a pressure differential in order to pr to promote 
the, the gas exchange from the high gradient to the lowest gradient as in uh, any, any depression or differential pressure that occurs in, in the nature or in physics. So you need to, to promote that you have a, 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 high, a, a high concentration on the outside. And this will come again from your ventilation system. And how we do it is that we, we promote we promote the ventilation inside the incubator. We promote the even when the damper is closed. We promote the ventilation because this will this will help either to uh, control heat, to promote or remove heat or the humidity. So depending on what we are controlling, that's that's how we we touch if you made the egg. That's with the, by the circulation inside inside our machine. And what we tend to do is, I always. Um, I will always talk about 25 and 50%, but please don't get me wrong. This is not exactly what I recommend. It's just for the sake of the presentation and it's uh, very close to what you will see in your, in your, or what you will specify in your setters or hardware because there, there's also some difference, but this is just for um, the sake of the presentation. And I think your embryologist on your uh, incubator company could give you more uh, fine-tune more detail on exact and also the, um, the genetics that you are using so that will have an effect on exactly temperatures that you need to, to use. Please just consider this for an example. So we, we promote the, the oxygen or we introduce the oxygen and we release the CO2. So we promote the oxygen via the fresh air, we release the CO2 on the exhaust side and also we control the heat and the relative humidity as long as the air goes inside the machine and it's circulating inside. Uh, and this is very, so I'm not saying anything new uh, to you guys. And, and so this is very easy to, to understand. Um, so what we need to understand a little bit is about the psychometrics. And the psychometrics is the branch of the physics that studies the, their properties. And what's important to, to understand is that we always need to correlate two factors and not only one. So when we say, when you talk about conditions, we shouldn't only talk about temperature. Let's say, uh, like if you say in, in a normal conversation with your friends, oh, I've been to a place that it's very hot and you say it's 40 degrees outside, but can be very hot, but very dry. It means that your body could release your perspiration easily to, to, the, to the environment. And sometimes you can be not in 40 degrees, but be in a place with 30 degrees, but because the relative humidity is, is too high, say in tropical regions that you cannot, your perspiration will be not absorbed by the, by the medium, by the environment. So it means that it's more difficult to have a, a gas exchange. And this is the, why we need to correlate temperature and relative humidity is to understand that because we are talking about uh, fluid uh, gas and, and the mass exchange, okay? And so, and also to understand that absolute humidity is different than relative humidity. So, so this would be the, the key, to, two parameters that I would like um, people to, to have at least an idea. And, um, and this will be the, the, the process that you can, you can use on the psychrometrics. But what we usually do is, and, and I think it's common sense for everybody, we talk about heating, it's increasing temperature. We talk about humidification, means that you are introducing humidification to your systems. So you are increasing the level of humidity on your system, we talk about cooling, which will be reducing temperature, and we talk about dehumidification. And this will be a combination of uh, two factors and uh, we will see in more detail because this is critical as we will see the impact on the egg weight loss that we talk about and the importance of having the right set point on, the, on your um, setters and hatcher room. So this will be a psychometric chart. And I'm sorry, this is more technical, but um, uh, I think it's good to have a, a general idea about, about this. And so this is the, the psychometric charts. And what, what is shown here is that this green line is like the dry force of the air. So it means that the air, it's not a linear, a linear scale. It's like an exponential. And, and so if, if you have like the relative humidity is not a linear factor, okay? And when you say that you have a relative humidity of 100%, you have an absolute humidity of, let's say, in this point zero zero one, and to double the the relative humidity, let's say to this point, you are not doubling the temperature. So it means that this is not linear. Okay, it's not a linear function. 
And that's why this is also a bit more difficult sometimes to understand and to read it. But I'm not asking you to, to understand the psychromatics, but to, just to have a, a, a general idea. And so a difference between the uh, relative humidity and absolute humidity, you can consider like the relative humidity the capacity that you can have or the proportion that you have in your glass. OK, let's say that you have this type of glass for different temperatures. OK, the first glass will be sized for 55 percent. So it means that when you are at 100 percent, you can you can absorb this much water. OK, let's say you have here one liter of water. And when you are at 75, you have 50 percent of that water, of the possible water, but you still have the same one liter but you are at 50% of your capacity. And we just went 20 degrees up. We didn't went to the double. We are not at 110 degrees, okay? So this is related to this part of the graph that is not linear, okay? And so if we see the example at 25 degrees, our holding capacity of the air, so means that the air can hold this much water. This is the water that you can hold. So this will be the temperature line, okay? Dry, dry bulb temperature. This will be the relative humidity lines, this here, 10, 20, 30, 40, so on. And this axis will be, the axis will be the absolute humidity, it means this is the, the absolute quantity of water that you have. So at 25 degrees, the maximum quantity of water that your air can hold, it will be 0, 0, 0,02 kilograms of water per each kilogram of air, okay? And to double, like similar to the example we were doing before, to double the same quantity of water for 004, we just need to go to around 37. And 37, it's a, it's a number that tells us uh, it's very common in our industry. So uh, 37, it will be around the maximum holding capacity of what will be 004. And these are numbers that are critical for our uh, process in our uh, setters and hatches because this is this will be the match water that you can control for your egg weight loss on your exhaust side or inside your machine and 25 will be a typical number that we use consider for your uh, inlet to the to the setter or hatcher room okay so it's easy to to understand that the relative humidity and the drying factor or drying capacity where would you prefer to dry your clothes? When it's cold outside or when it's dry? When it's dry, why? Because when it's cold, this is the maximum capacity that the air can hold moisture. So if you have your clothes very wet and you need to dry them out, when it's cold outside, let's say zero degrees, this is the much water that you can pass to the air. If it's cold, means that you have all this space to absorb, okay? So this is like the absorption, it's like a sponge, the air works like a, a uh, drying force, okay? It's a sponge that will can absorb or not the, um, the, um, the water from the air to the surroundings. So we, we talk about the, the process that we can, we can have the um, heating and, and, and cooling. So heating, it's easy to understand. It's just, we, we increase the, the temperature. Okay, we are, co it's cold outside, it's zero degrees and we heat and we are at 25. But now, as we can see, we are in a lower point of relative humidity. If we introduce the air like this, we will be around 18% um, or 17%. So in order to achieve the, the, 20, the 50%, what we need to work now is on the humidity side. So first we heat, now we need to control the, the, um, the humidity. Okay, so we heat and we humidify. That's usually typical. That's what we do in, in, in cold weather, in cold regions. The opposite will be cooling. Cooling is when you need to reduce temperature. You go from the 35 to the 25, and this is called sensible cooling because you're not touching the absolute humidity value. So you are just reducing temperature. You didn't touch on the, on the quantity of water that it's in the air. You touch the relative because relative as the name says, is relative to that point, is relative to that state. So your sensible cooling just remove the temperature. Now increasing a little bit the, um, the complexity, it will talk about dehumidification. But this is very important because dehumidification is what will allow you to control the 
relative humidity inside your setter when outside is very cold and humid. But you need to you need to have the right set point inside your machine. So the, the egg or the embryo and your process, your hatchery doesn't care if it's if it's uh, if it's day or night, if it's summer or winter, it will always like the same conditions. And therefore, we need to provide the right conditions to, to the room. And the dehumidification process, in order to do a dehumidification, you cannot go from 0.1 to 0.2. So from you, you cannot be at, let's say, uh, 32 degrees with 78% relative humidity, and you want your set point inside the room 25, you cannot go direct from P1 to P2. And the easiest uh, way I have to um, talk about um, dehumidification and is explaining the condensation. We have here two pictures that will uh, give a, um, a quick idea about what, what's the condensation and why we need to do the condensation. condensation is where you, you are removing the, the quantity of water that you have in your air. So in order to dehumidify by the name, you, you need to reduce the, the humidity. So you need to remove the water. How we do that is that we pass the air through a cold surface. This, is, this will be a cooling coil in your air handling unit or in your um, rooftop or whatever ventilation system you, you use. And why, why is that? Why we need to to, to pass the, the water through a cooling, the gear through a cooling coil. Imagine when you're leaving your hot shower and you, you see your water vapor and you, you see the, the, the mirror and you see the, the, the mist condensated on the, on the, um, or the water vapor condensated on, on your mirror. What you see is that uh, hot water, uh, hot water um, vapor collides with a cold surface. And so it condensates because it will reach the saturation point and will start to condensate. It will reach what is called the dew point. The same with a, with a, with a beer. When you're in a, in a, in a, having a, a cold beer in a, in a hot climate and you see the condensation on your glass. So that's what's happening is that you have a, a hot air uh, and humid colliding with a cold surface and there is condensating, okay? So this is to explain the condensation, how you remove the water. You remove the water from the air. But now the water after the cooling coil is too cold. Now you need to reheat. So you need to pass it through a, a heating coil. And the way you do this can be different ways. You can have a better or not so uh, good uh, ventilation system. You can use heat recovery like our systems um, uh, work. But that's not the point of this presentation. Just to tell you that you can have different ways to reheat the air. But this is what you'll see like in a, in a spa or in a swimming pool. In order to dehumidify, you'll see a cooling, a cooling coil and after uh, a heating coil. So first, from going from P1 to P2, if you are here in one, you need to condensate. So pass on the cooling coil. Now you are in point two. And after point two to point three, you need to reheat, okay? First you cool, then you reheat. That's the basics for dehumidification. And why we need that why we are talking always about 25 and 50% and why we want to go if we are outside and we want to go to this uh, P1. So P1 in this case will be your setter. Okay, let's talk about setter corridor. You, you are at 25 and 50 degree, 50% 50 relative humidity. So that's the conditions in your setter corridor, P1. P2 will be your exhaust, okay? And I'm sorry, I'm talking in, in, in Celsius. So Let's say 25 will be uh, 77 and 37 will be 98 uh, or something, uh, 98.6 uh, in Fahrenheit. Sorry, only now I realize. Um, and so between P1 and P2, that's where, where your machine will work. So this is, this is where your machine will work. What we are doing is that we are helping our machine. We are giving a stable uh, set point, a stable condition in your machine, regardless if it's day or night, if it's summer or winter, to your machine, we are always providing the best conditions that will, let's say, con consider 25, 50%. So what we are doing is that we are giving this capacity to the machine to cool. So we are helping with our, with our ventilation system, with our air, we are creating the cooling effect. And you also able to control humidity. So if you want to control this relative humidity, if you put the air too dry, what will happen is, the, is that you will absorb, that your machine can, can have more space to absorb more humidity. 
how the whole machine will, will cope with it or it will it will work on on your damper it will close the dampers therefore it will not allow enough air for for the co2 and o2 exchange that you want so in order to control the humidity you will fight against the o2 and the co2 uh, so if you work on the other side if you put too humid you don't have that much capacity on the air to absorb that much humidity that you would like and therefore what you need to do is that you need to force your your damper to to pass more air and uh, what what can happen is that you if you are already on the late stage on the 16 17 18 day on your incubator you are already 100 percent with the damper open what will happen is that you, there's no more damper to open so you cannot lose uh, humidity and and that's why you will not lose enough egg weight loss it just happened this week that we had some customer asking some some problems that was happening on the and this is very common that will will not achieve the egg weight loss and what was doing and controlling then the the relative humidity in the corridor and they need he works on some trials now he's he's getting there and that's that's why it's so critical if you don't put your 25 or let's say again 25 50 percent your machine will be unbalanced and if you have a system that will not be properly sized because it's very cold outside it cannot cool that much it so it will give you the air to your set at around 30 degrees means that you are not helping this match your machine so you can help your machine to cool because your machine usually you have a cooling coil a heating coil or or electrical resistance you can have humidifiers so your machine has its own devices to or its own mechanism to to control this but the more you help the more stable conditions you 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 provide to your machine the more stable it will it will work and more reliable will be your 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 results and also easier it will be to work with your machine because you know exactly how it behaves because if one day it's like at 30 degrees or and the, the morning or in during the afternoon then then it's at 20 your machines it's fluctuating then the damper will fighting against the heating coil then the heating coil will fight against the cooling and the electrical and then comes the humidifier then you have cold spots then then you have wet eggs and sweating and so it's a question it, it's a it's a snowball and and that's why we are talking about this and the egg weight loss i think is critical and temperature and relative humidity and right cfms is critical to have your machine working properly so this is what your machine can can work and this is what you are giving to the machine sorry again talking about the egg weight loss remember that you can lose around 900 liters of moisture across one cycle in in one one of these machines so you need to have a good quantity of air passing on these machines but if you have more you can dry too much if you have less you cannot let's say dry it or lose the the egg weight that you would like and therefore this is what your machine is working and that's why i'm touching oh, all this time about this point because it's critical to understand and this is why i explained the psychometrics and i hope it's not too detailed and it's easy to to understand at least the basics and uh, and that's where it comes to stage programming it's because the p2 it's not always p2 because sometimes you have a stage or a profile or depending on your manufacturer uh, on chick mass and james i believe we call stage and uh, or profile and uh, and so your p2 sometimes you can you can want um so it will change you can want from 37 or 38 or in in fahrenheit 99 100 98.6 whatsoever and also the relative humidity you want to to decrease so that's what you want to control but if you give a stable condition to your machine then your machine will work smoothly and will work towards your um your targets and what you you want to achieve according to your lines from your um, incubationist or your genetics uh, company. And um, so that's what we'll give you our stage program because like what, what we want to show here is that the stage programming will change accordingly. And so from these five points that we talked before, five, our, four out of five will come from the ventilation. The temperature, how we control temperature with the chill water, with the hot water and with the ventilation, with the air, right? The air, it's also having a cooling or heating effect. Humidity, how we control with the humidification, of course, and also with the air. So if you supply the air with the right humidity set point, you need to add that much uh, humidification inside your machine. 
and therefore you can save some wet eggs and uh, sweating and uh, those all these critical things. You can have the CO2, uh, sorry, how you control the CO2 via the ventilation, how you control the O2 via the ventilation again, and the turning. So the turning is a different type, put here compressor, could be electrical uh, whatsoever, but what it means is that it's out of the, it's out of the, um, the incubator. It's coming from the incubator, not from the ventilation. The temperature, humidity, and pressure, the three key parameters. So how we control because temperature, humidity, and pressure. Pressure, it's what will give us, sorry. Pressure, it's what will give us, what will allow us to control uh, quantity. Okay, so if we split quality and quantity, or like if we qualify and quantify, quality, that's what I like to call, what we qualify as temperature and humidity will be quality. That's what will give you quality in your, in your parameters. The quantity it will be, how much, right? It will be the airflow. How we control the airflow? It will be with pressure, either on the air, on your chill water or hot water system. Pressure, that's what will guarantee you the, the water flow, the quantity, and quality will be temperature, either on if it's on the air side or on the water side, temperature will be your quality. Again, just to remember how we control this is via the ventilation and the circulation of air and air movement, but that's inside the machine. But where, how, how it works before. So typically, this will be a, a, our uh, installation, our design uh, for a, a, setter, a, a setter hallway. So you have a number of grills, size, properly sized for the number of machines and the number of machines. So for the number of eggs you have on these machines, it will dictate the number of CFMs whatsoever. And then you will, you will size properly your ventilation system, your HVAC system and also the distribution of the grills. Because sometimes people just care about, okay, I need that much CFM on, on my room. That's what I need. Okay, but do you have it with quality? Do you have a, a short distratification of temperature between the top to the bottom? And it's not direct to the, to, the, to the machine because sometimes you can have a discharge of, because your machines, they radiate. So when you are putting this way, you are already treating part of the radiant heating coming from your machines. And therefore, if you supply, let's say your set point is at 25, what you need to do is let's say supply at 23, because the two degrees difference will come from radiating heating from the fascia of the machine. And therefore, if you have your set point at 25 and you're supplying at 23, if you supply direct to the machines, then you are you are you are tricking yourself. You are not giving the right condition to your machines. You can read 25 in your room, but in the end, you are you are supplying 23 to your machines. And so that's that's very important to have a proper a proper design uh, a good design HVAC system that's important for the working of the machines. And then going back to the pressure, how this system works, how it's typically designed, is that we work with the, we control pressures, we control the pressure inside the room, and then the pressure on the plenum, and we work the machine as a medium. So the you have a positive pressure in your plenum if we see this uh, side cut. Um, uh, pro profile of uh, a setter corridor, uh, you, you have a positive pressure in your corridor coming the air from your ductwork through the grill, like we see on the picture, and then you have a positive pressure in your room. The positive pressure will make that the air will go through the list of path resistance, will be through the machines that have the starts to having the dampers open, and so you have the, the air going through the machine, and then it will exhaust to the plenum. So we control also the, let's call it the, the pressure in your plenum via uh, a very simple but um, somehow sophisticated system on the on the pressure side and that's how we guarantee that you have enough cfm in your room so that's how we 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 control quantity to your machines in terms of air volume so depending on the type of machine that you can have a, a single stage a, a multi-stage if it's a, a cheat master or it's a james wick or uh, also other type of machines, any machine, like I said before, they will work in the same way in this respect. All the machines, they need oxygen. All the machines need to control oxygen, needs to control temperature and humidity. So regardless of the system, what will change is the number. It will be the CFM that your manufacturer will tell you. It will be the pressure in your room. Some machines works with them, needs more, let's say, help or depends on a higher pressure from your corridor. It's not better, it's not worse, it's just different. It's just how the machine is designed. That's what I'm trying to highlight and what, what 
it's important is that you you listen to your manufacturer and you 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 put your uh, ventilation system according to your manufacturer um, specifications and so managing rooms to to, to on, on the pressure keys to, to success it will be having a, a good room like you you will not have uh, holes in your in your panels you have uh, good ceiling doors you have a good uh, doors management you will not leave your doors open even i understand that when it's transfer time that you can you can um, leave doors more time open but you know if you, if you have all this type of good good procedures on your um, on your if you take care of your pressure in your room if there's no avoid the leaks you you will make the your room work stable and if you have a stable room your machines will also work stable and then you like i said before you need to obey depending on your um, on your provider the number of cfms per thousand x and um, depending on the type of machine and the specifications uh, it, you need to put more or less uh, pressure in the corridor or in the plenum um, and and we, with the pressure, what we also can do apart. So this this was helping on the quality side and quantity side to the machines in terms of air volume and to achieve the good weight, weight, weight loss and all what we discussed so far. But also important that we 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 take from controlling with pressure is that we guarantee what we call a pressure cascade. So if we take a, a, a hatchery example, a hatchery layout example. We would consider on the left side as the clean side and on the on the right side as the dirtiest side. So if we work on the egg, egg flow, we have the egg reception, the eggs go to the store, then to the setters, comes out and goes here to the transfer washroom. And we have the circuit on the egg side. Then we have the transfer to the basket, the takeoff, wash, and, and this circle, the cycle, sorry. And then we have the cycle on the, on the cheek takeoff. And as long as we go, the more we go towards the right, the, the dirtiest will be the air and more contamination uh, will happen and, uh, or possible to, to happen. And so if we control uh, uh, what we call a pressure cascade, what we want to do is when we open a set room, we don't want the room, the door, sorry, when we open a set room door, we don't want the air to go from the transfer to the setter because on the transfer you already have eggs exploding or you can have or can have dirty air and what you don't want to do is to contaminate okay um and that's also coming from um i forgot to say that on the previous slide that this comes from a hundred percent fresh air which there is no recirculation and this is critical for the biosecurity so if you have no recirculation because the hundred percent fresh air all the air that it's here will be consumed by the machines if it's not consumed so the damper will work on the pressure and 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 again it will work as a, a pressure differential will start to close the damper to or in order to maintain the pressure but if this door is open then the damper will open to 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 increase the pressure that was lost to this room but what we guarantee is that we have a clean room here the the air from the transfer was not and it was not entering to the center and the same with with the other room so we we have a, a pressure cascade and so we have a, a an airflow from the clean side to the dirty side okay and so we have we have a a pressure cascade in terms of the set points on the on the on each room that we have and more important than any parameters i'm putting here between for instance the setter room between 5 and 15 because this depends if it's a a single stage, a multi-stage, if it's a chick master, if it's a James Way, if it's a chick master multi-stage, if it's a James Way multi-stage, a chick master single or a chick or a James Way single stage. So depending on the manufacturing type of machine, this, this can be different. The same, the, um, the same on the plenum and on the on the hatcher. So the hatchers and the, the rooms and plenums and setters, it will be depending on your machine side. And the rest, it will be depending on your automation equipment and also on your layout so not all layouts are the same and what we need to guarantee is that if this is a dirty room and we want to guarantee that this room it's a lower pressure than this one and so and we want to guarantee that this is higher than that one and and so on so we need to work as an overall in the in the whole hatchery and and there's no rule of thumb to the to to each room i cannot say 
minus five will work in a, in a chick takeoff. Well, it may work depending on the rooms you have contingents because what you want to do is that if you want this to be the highest oppression, you need to make sure that this is lower than this one, for instance. And that's what it's important is to understand overall layout and design accordingly to your specific layout to guarantee a, a pressure cascade and have a good commissioning and understand how things work. Um, and so, and what would be the results from, from a poor um, ventilation system? Will be uh, too low temperature or too high temperature. So it will increase, uh, it will make what I said before, it will not create a stable condition to your machine. So it will call for your heating or your cooling in your machines. And this will affect uh, your, your hatch ability. It will, it will affect your, your hatch window and the quality of your, uh, of your chicks. And also depends on the type of machine. Some machines, they work based on, uh, on sometimes also the stages. Sometimes you work on CO2 and, and, or, or humidity or temperature. So depending on how you're controlling the machine can have a different impact on your, on your site. The same will happen, I can say, about the, the, the humidity. So if it's too high or too low, it will, it will be the same, or too dry or too humid. So if it's too dry, you, you, will, you will possibly dry too much. So you will lose more, uh, exceed the, the weight loss that you want. Or depending if that damper is controlling on a, on a humidity, it will work to the, um, to the minimum. And so it, it will all, in the end, it will always create some inconsistency on your, uh, on your machine. And that's, I think it's the key to remove from, from, from this is a good ventilation system will create a stable conditions, okay? And if you don't have um, the right set points in your, in, your, uh, in your room, it will be unstable, okay? To make it easier to, to understand. And the same, the same with the pressure. With the pressure, we will not provide good CO2, in, or, sorry, good oxygen or enough oxygen, or you'll not deplete enough CO2, or you'll not heat removal or moisture, or you can have in, in the last instance, the um, no biosecurity like I explained on the previous slides. So everything is linked. Everything is like a, an organic system that one thing is related to the other. If you increase the temperature, you are touching the relative humidity because everything is linked. If you open the damper, you are putting more air inside the machine because you are putting more air that air can be hot or cold depending to your set points or more humid or less. So everything is linked and it's very complex and that's why you need to, to rely on uh, specific companies that they know what they are doing to a setter and, and hatcher, not to a, a school or a, a hospital, if you may. So again, too cold. Can be can lead to to low temperature uniformity, uh, especially occurring in early incubation. So it will extend your hatch window. Um, too warm, so it can dry, can can lead to dehumidification or um, drying your 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 cheeks too much, especially on uh, on a hatcher. And um, and then it will call for for um, because as I was saying, it's everything linked. Can call for humidification. Then you have uh, wet floors. Again, too dry and too humid, you can even um, or dry too much or not get enough, um, not get enough egg weight loss, okay? Uh, just to summarize, feedback from our customers, and I, I like to emphasize this word is stable conditions, okay, stable environment, it will give you a short hatch window and a good cheap quality and good production. Because if you have a short hatch, short hatch window is critical, because short hatch window, that's what makes that all the chicks are in the same level when it goes to the farm and it will uh, have all the benefits that you, you know better than I do. Uh, so again, correct and stable rooms will, will create uniform results on temperature and humidity and pressure and will support the incubation equipment, produce healthy and quality chicks or uh, uh, any bird you, you, you are treating. <clears throat> 